Let us see part two. Uh, in order to study the wave transform in soil, first we derived these equations in elastic materials. Then this part is wave transform in elastic infinite medium. The first part, we use one-dimensional wave propagation condition. The simplest one-dimensional model of an infinite media is an infinite row or axis. There are three different types of vibration that may occur in a thin rod. The first is longitudinal vibration. In vibration, the rod is elongated or contracted along the axial direction without lateral displacement. The second is torsional vibration. The rod is twisted around its axle without the lateral displacement. The third is flexural vibration. The rod moves laterally. The kind of the vibration is seldom used in soil dynamics, so it is not to be discussed. The first longitudinal waves in infinite length rod. Now this is the rod, a thin rod, and with a round cross section area, and there's a constraint. The constraint condition, the different constraint condition is that the. The 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 displacement in the direction with the axle ah uh, is allowed, but the lateral displacement is not allowed ah. Uh. Then uh the material uh properties density and the Young's modulus Poisson ratio and the cross section area. Is given, uh, and the axle is x. Uh, we select uh, a small size element, uh, and the left coordinate of this element is x. The right coordinate of it is x plus dx. Uh, that means the length of it is dx. Now we have to analyze the. Analyzed the uh, the vibration of it. You see, the continue line means the initial initial location of two sides of this element. The dash line means the vibration to the farthest location. Ah, uh, the two sides location. Then for the left side, the coordinate uh, is u. Uh, the the coordinate of this size, uh, u is a function of x and t. To right size, uh, the 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 location is uh, is uh, uh, u plus du dx. Dx. Ah. Now let's see the force acting on the on this element. On the left side, there's a normal stress acting on it is sigma x, and at the right side, there's a, another is another normal stress because the stress is a function. Due to the uh, x coordinate, <laughs> then because the the location already changed to uh, by the x, uh, then 
we have to modify this normal stress by these terms. Uh, d sigma x dx times dx. Uh, then this is the stress acting on the right side. And because the element is in vibration, uh, then there's an acceleration, u2 point. That's the acceleration. And there's an initial, initial force due to the sector acceleration. Then this initial force is equal to F equal to MA. A means acceleration. Here is U2 point. And M is the mass of it. Then we have to calculate the mass of this element. We use rho density times the, the volume of it cross-section area times the length of it, dx, then this is the mass of it. Then we can get, we can get the, the initial force acting on it. Uh, now we can create a dynamic equilibrium condition. Uh, 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 Here, uh, the force acting on two sides, the sum of force acting on two sides, just equal to initial force acting on the elements. This is dynamic equilibrium condition. Here, U is the displacement of the particle along the XL X. The formula simply, uh, simply, uh, simply states that the unbalanced external force acting on both ends of the elements is equal to the initial force produced by the acceleration of the element. Now simplify that equations we can get here these equations. Negative d sigma x dx equal to rho times the u d u d t d u square d t square. The stress strain relationship and the confined compression is introduced. In fact, this is a phys physical equation. Uh, sigma x equal to modular m times uh, epsilon x. Uh, sigma x is uh, the normal force and uh, uh, epsilon x is the strain in that direction. Here the modular, uh, the modular uh, is not Young's modular, uh, but it's a mod uh, compression modular. Uh, it's equal to 1 minus mu. Uh, over 1 plus mu times the 1 minus 2 mu, then times the Young's modular. <laughs> Confining uh, uh, this, this modular is uh, uh, lateral constraint modular. Uh, confining compression modular, uh, or we will say it's confining compression modulars, uh, uh, or we say Oido metric modulars. Uh, usually, we use Oido metric test. We can get. We do Oido metric test. We can get these uh, these modulars. The geometric relationship between string and displacement is also noted. Uh, when the pressure is uh, here, we we de define that uh, the pressure is uh, positive. Uh, the pressure is positive. Then epsilon x just equal to negative du dx. Now we submit uh, the uh, equation 3.13 uh, to the equation 3.11. Uh, then we can get uh, equation 3.14. Uh, Sigma x equal to negative m times du dx here. 
we introduce the u into the equation. Then by substituting the above formula into one-dimensional motion equation, uh, 3.9, the following one-dimensional longitudinal wave equation of the thin rod with lateral confinement is obtained. Uh, this is the equation. du square over dt square equal to m over e, uh, uh, m over e, uh, and uh, times the du square over dx square. Here, uh, the velocity of the wave propagation is further introduced, vp. Uh, Vp just equal to square root of m over p. Uh, then the two, the one-dimensional wave equations can be written as du square over dt square equal to Vp square times the du square over dx square. The wave velocity is the velocity of stress wave propagating along the road, which is different from particle velocity. The particle velocity is the velocity of the particle in the road during the propagation process. From the geometry equations, we can know that du just equal to negative epsilon u dx. From the physical equations, dx is equal to sigma x over m. And from the definition wave velocity, dx just equal to u m dt. Then the particle velocity is given as this. u point is du dt uh, is equal to uh, equal to negative epsilon x dx dt uh, and uh, then is uh, negative dx over m times the vm times the dt dt simplify it left uh, negative sigma x over m times the vm and this is uh, we we replace uh, uh, this is rho uh, this is rho uh, replace the m uh, replace the m by rho v m square <coughs> then uh, finally it is sim simplified as negative sim uh, sigma x over rho v m. It can be seen that the particle velocity is directly proportional to the axial stress of the rod, while the pro proportional coefficient is called the specific impedance of the material. The specific impedance is another important material parameter, which affects the wave characteristics at the boundary. Yeah. Then let's discuss the, the torsional wave in infinite length rod. <coughs> it's also a rod with a round cross section area. Uh, and there's an XL, uh, X. Uh, uh, <coughs> we, select, we select an element, length is dx and analyzes the force acting on it. Uh, there's a two, uh, two sides, and inside there's a talker. Uh, uh, left side, talker is T, and another side, talker is T plus dt dx dx times d, dx. Uh, because there's a rotation, rotation, uh, rotation. Uh, then this rotation will generate 
uh, inner show force uh, then uh, we can create the uh, dynamic equilibrium equation of it uh, the <coughs> left force minus right force uh, this is force acting uh, on the two sides equal to the rotation inertial force <coughs> is equal to rho j dx uh, d theta square dt square because the, this uh, displacement is angle theta then the acceleration is uh, d theta square dt square <coughs> and here there's a j j is the polar moment of inertia of the road around its axle which is uh, which is simplified to obtain the motion equations. The equation nine point uh, three point nineteen uh, is simplified to equation three point twenty. Uh, d t d x equal to rho times j d theta square over d t square. Introducing torque angle relationship. Uh, T just equal to uh, GJ times uh, D theta DX. Uh. Here, G is the shear modular of the bar. Uh, so the torsional wave equation can be written as D theta square DT equal to G over rho uh, times the D theta square over DX square. The propagation velocity V S is the torsional wave is defined as V S equal to square root of G over rho. Then we replaced G over rho. Uh, then the equation get uh, is rewrite here. D theta square over D T square equal to V S square times the D theta square over D X square. Note that the torsional wave equation in the equation 324 is the same as the longitudinal wave equations in equation 3.70. Then the difference between them is only in wave velocity. Here, it's only here. It can be seen that the wave velocity depends on the deformation mode caused by the wave. The stiffness of the rod is related to the material density, but the amplitude of stress-free wave is independent. Note that Vp in the equation 3.17 and Vs in the equation 3.23. Uh, 24 uh, are also called uh, 23 are also called p wave velocity and shear wave velocity respectively this is uh, uh, s wave velocity <coughs> this is p wave velocity And the P wave is primary wave. Uh, the rotation displacement the direction is same with the transform direction. And the shear wave, S wave, uh, we can say is second, secondary wave or shear wave. Uh, <coughs> the uh, vibration displacement the direction is normal to the transform direction. <coughs> now let's see the solution of one-dimensional wave equations. The general form of the one-dimensional wave equations can be expressed by the following partial differential equations. Partial differential equations. du square over dt square is equal to v square times the du square over dx square where V is the wave velocity corresponding to the stress wave types investigated by Delta. 
The solution can be written in the following form. <coughs> Usually, we have this form solution. U x t equal to f v t minus x plus g uh, v t plus x. <coughs> Here, f and g are the arbitrary uh, positive number satisfied uh, equation three point twenty five and uh, v t minus x and v t plus x. When the wave velocity v and of x increase with the time, the variable in f remains constant. When x in decreases with time, the variable in g remains constant. <coughs> Therefore, the solution gave uh, the solution given in the equation three point twenty six described the displacement wave g. Vt plus x propagating along the negative direction of x with wave velocity v. At the same time, it is implied that the shape of wave does not change with shape space position of time. Where the bar is subjected to a steady state harmonic stress wave sigma t equal to sigma uh, sigma zero uh, cosine omega t, where sigma zero is the amplitude of stress wave and omega is the circular frequency of the applied load. Then the wave solution can be expressed as u x t equal to a cosine omega t minus k x plus b sine omega t plus k x. <coughs> Here, the first term and the second term represents the simple harmonic propagating along the per positive and the negative direction of x respectively. When the relationship between wave number <coughs> and the wave length L is L equal to V T and equal to V over F <coughs> and equal to two pi over omega times V <coughs> or equal to two pi over K wave wave number <coughs> is significant. Uh, its significance is shown in the figure. Uh, in in that figure, mm, in the in the figure three point one. Ah. <coughs> now let's see complex harmonic waves. When the complex form is used, the e equivalent form of the solution of the wave equation is given as this. Ah. U i t equal to c e part i omega t minus k x plus d e d times e part i omega t plus k x. <coughs> Just now I introduced uh, the one-dimensional uh, wave propagation in elastic media <coughs> material. <coughs> Now, in fact, uh, when we studied uh, <coughs> in the soil, it's a three-dimensional questions. Then we have to uh, study uh, the three-dimensional wave propagation. <coughs> Before we learn the three-dimensional wave propagation, first we have two expressions of stress strain and uh, the equations in three-dimensional condition. Now let's see. First is stress. In continuum body, ah, when we describe the stress in it, usually we have to use a small element surrounding that point. 
even the size of this element, cubic element, is very small. Uh, because the size of it very small, then the stress acting on the surface of it can uh, representing can re represents the the stress state of the point. Now let's see this cubic element. Totally, they have six surfaces, and in each surface, there's a uh, three stress acting on it, one normal stress and two shear stress. Uh, we have to use some subscript to to describe the which stress it is. Then let's see. Uh, we use two subscript. Now, <clears throat> the first uh, subscript means the the axial name, the axial name of the false direction. You see, this shear force is in y direction. Then first the subscript is y, and that. Uh, shear force in, is in x direction, then uh, the first subscript is x, s. <clears throat> and the second subscript means the XL parallel with the normal vector of the surface with this stress acting on. Now let's see, this stress acting on this surface and the normal vector of this surface is parallel with XLZ, axis, axis Z. <clears throat> then the second subscript is Z. Now, now we we know how to uh, how to mark the stress. Uh, here, uh, How to say? Mm. Because the uh, the stress uh, acting on the uh, related uh, pair of surface, they are same. Uh, then totally, we have nine. We have nine. Uh, we have nine. Uh, stresses are uh, three normal stress and uh, uh, six shear stress. Uh, but there's a, a shear stress uh, equal to each other theorem, uh, or it is known that the shear stress equivalence theorem. This this theorem is sigma ij equal to sigma gi. Then we can find in this expression, uh, in this expression there's a 9, uh, but according to this shear stress equivalence theorem, then only 6, only 6 variables in this, in this uh, tension expression. It's a tension expression. Then we can also use a vector to express the stress. Sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, tau x, y, tau y, z, tau z, x. Then now we know that for stress, we have two expressions. The first one is tension expression. Another is a vector expression. But for any expressions, there's a only six. There's a only six uh, stress. This six stress is uh, independent. 
six stresses is independent. Uh, for